Let's talk some about attenuated total reflection, or ATR. This is probably the most common technique currently used in FTIR. It is very easy to use. It is very straightforward. And what we're going to look at is how people use it and why. Now, first of all, how. In ATR, you have a crystal of some material through which the infrared light passes. So you have that crystal material, and the infrared light comes up, passes through the crystal, and then goes back down. So it comes in this way and goes out that way. And where it strikes the surface of the surface of this crystal, it sets up something called an evanescent wave. And that evanescent wave leaves the crystal or scans the material outside the crystal to a distance which we call dp, which is the depth of penetration. And then in order to use this system, we bring our sample into contact with that surface and that infrared light interacts with the sample. Now, what affects dp? What affects the depth of penetration? And there are really just a few things. One is the wavelength or wave number of the light. As the wave number gets larger or the wavelength gets shorter, the energy goes up, the depth of penetration drops. So let's write this as shorter equals shallower. The shorter the wavelength, the shallower it is, which means as we sweep across the infrared range, it goes from penetrating deeply to penetrating less deeply. Another thing that affects it is the angle at which the infrared light comes in. I've shown it coming in at about 45 degrees here. If we come in more steeply like this, such that the light comes in more steeply, the depth of penetration is correspondingly shallower. So if you have a 45 degree crystal or a 60 degree crystal, the 60 will always have a shallower depth of penetration. The other thing that matters, and this one matters uh, quite a bit, this is the big one, is the index of refraction of that crystal. By which I mean the index of refraction, the material that it's made out of. And if we just look at two such materials, diamond, and germanium, two of the more common crystals that we work with. Diamond has an index of about 2.4. This leads to a depth of penetration of about 2 microns. So that's the path length. If we think back to Beer's law, the path length into which the sample will penetrate is given by that. Germanium has an index of 4, much, much higher and the depth of penetration is about 0.7 microns, much less. So if you have a material such as a carbon black rubber, something that scatters or, or absorbs very strongly, you want a shallow depth of penetration because otherwise you're going to get overabsorption. So in those cases, you use germanium. The general purpose crystal that people use is diamond. And the other thing that matters, a couple of other things that matter, one is the price. The price, of course, of a diamond crystal is going to be higher than that for germanium. And another thing is the robustness of that crystal, by which I mean how it holds up to acid or abrasion or cleaning or use. And the diamond, in general, is a more robust crystal than, say, the germanium is. And zinc selenide, which has very similar optical properties to diamond, is much softer. It's much less expensive. It's much softer, however, so it's less robust. So when we think about it, what are the critical things that matter when you're using an ATR, when you're deciding which one to use? The first thing is going to be the depth of penetration, because you want to know whether or not you're going to have a lot of sample or a little, and whether or not you're going to have a sample that is hard and whether it's going to be in good contact with the surface. That's the real critical first thing when you're using it. You have to have an intimate contact of the sample with the crystal. With a liquid, this is no problem because the liquid just spreads out over the surface and you've got no problem making contact. However, for a solid, if you have a powder which consists of little crystals, 
the only place that you're getting signal is where those little crystals are touching the surface. So if it's a very highly granular powder, then you may get weak signal because you're not making good contact. And if you have something like a brick or, or a rock, you know, that has a high degree of irregularity, it won't contact very well at all. And in that case, you get very poor signals. So the first thing is that intimacy of contact. It's got to be very good. The next thing is to consider what kind of samples you're going to be running. Are they soft samples? Are they hard samples? Are you going to be running multiple samples? So that, that gives you which one you need for the robustness. And then finally, if you're dealing with liquids and you're looking for different uh, materials in those liquids that may be at low concentrations, you may want a higher angle so that you get a deeper penetration and therefore a better signal. You're seeing more of the sample. Again, think back to Beer's Law where the L, the length, the path length in Beer's Law tells you that you're seeing more of the sample. Or if you have high concentrations, maybe you want a shallow signal. So that's a very brief overview of ATR. And now let's move into the lab and look at some of these devices and see how they work.